Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 6 of your Java game development tutorial series. Um, today we are going to create a world class. This is going to be um, very important. The world class is going to hold all of the stuff, you know, the stuff that's in our game. Um, so it's kind of important. Um, I'm going to go over here and create a new package. Org dot uh, world. Inside of it, I'm going to put a class. I'm just going to call it world. Now, I'm going to make it so that you can have multiple worlds. Um, and each world basically could be like one level of your game. Uh, whenever you want to uh, switch um, levels, you just switch worlds. Or create a new world and fill it with stuff and then make that world the current world. The way we're going to do this is we're going to have uh, public, uh, public static um, world current world equals null to start with. Um, and now public static uh, void render and it's going to take graphics object so graphics G. Um, this will loop through all of the sprites in the world and render them amongst other things. Uh, we also want public static void void update and uh, this takes this doesn't take anything um, so the current world this is the world that we're currently playing uh, and what we'll do is we'll loop through in the update function we'll loop through all of the things in the world and update them then the render function will loop through all the things in the current world and render them. Uh, so one thing we're going to need is public, and this is not static, you'll notice, public um, array list. Now we're going to need a couple bird beaks like that, and inside of it we'll put, it's a, see this is an array list of what exactly? We need to specify what this is an array of. An array of sprite. Now we have not created sprite yet, so ignore that. Uh, and it's called um, sprites, quite simply. Equals new array list. Type sprite and a couple parentheses. Now right now it's giving us a problem because uh, this is a completely different type of sprite right there. I'm going to delete that and save it. We're getting an error, obviously. I'm going to go ahead and create, not a class, a package, org.object. Inside of it, I'm going to put a new class called sprite. Now over here in world, we need to import it. And it gets rid of our error. So that's good for now. Um, the sprite class is going to be you know, our real sprite class later on. Um, what we want to do is here in... Um, well, we want to... Let's, let's go to the sprite class. Mm, I don't want to create our sprite class yet. I want this episode to be about creating the world. That gives us a bit of a dilemma, doesn't it? Because we can't really continue to make the world class without having the sprite class. So we'll, we'll go ahead and add a little bit to the sprite class. Um, we're going to create empty shells of the method that we'll make later on. So we're going to say public void render graphics g. And we'll put nothing in there for now. Also, public void update um, float delta time. And we'll put nothing in there for now. Okay, these are the empty shells of the methods that we'll use later on. So back to world. In update, we'll say for, create a for loop, for, it's more like a for each kind of thing, for sprite, sprite, full colon, sprites. So for every sprite, we'll call it sprite in the variable sprites. Uh, sorry, this should be in current world dot sprites, because we want the sprites of our current world. And this is not static, so we can't access it inside the static method without giving an instance of the world, which is this. So, for each sprite, 
sprite dot update uh, delta. We'll get the delta time in a moment. Uh, let's call it delta time. Um, I'll show you how to do that right now. In fact, float delta time is equal to system. Uh, no, uh, yeah, that's right. System dot nano time minus last time. We'll go ahead and create the variable last time. Um, private static long last time equals zero. This is the last time that we checked anything. So we'll say uh, delta time equals system dot nano time minus last time. Uh, but that will give us nanoseconds. What we want is the time in seconds. So, you know, the, this is going to be a float value. It's going to be like 0 0.016 or something like that. It's basically the the time in seconds since the last update. So, system dot nano time minus last time. Divide that by one zero 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 point zero f. Okay, the reason why we need to do this is what this is is one seconds worth of nanoseconds, uh, and then the point zero f to specify that this is a float and that we want to use decimal points, and then it'll it'll give us the correct value. So that's about it for update for now. In render, we're going to say um, again we're going to do this little loop right here. So I'm going to copy the loop and put it in there. Um, but instead, what we want to say is sprite dot render, and just pass it g. It's really that simple. Um, that's all we really need for the world class for now. Um, until we create our sprite class more fully later on, uh, we won't be able to see the results of our, you know, the fruits of our labor for this world class yet. But we laid down some groundwork here that's going to be very important. Uh, so if you like this episode, please comment, uh, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.